right now. Tail of the tape, both fighters 26 years old, just one inch taller for Mackenzie Dern. Both weighed in right at 115, a three inch reach advantage lies with Amanda Hibas. Here's Joe Martinez. And here we go, ladies and gentlemen, the next round tonight, three rounds, this in the UFC strawweight division. Introducing to you first, Flanagan of the Blue Corner, a judo practitioner standing 5 feet 3 inches tall, weighing in officially 115 pounds, her professional record, 7 victories and 1 defeat, Flanagan of Virginia, Minas Gerais, Brazil, here is Amanda Hibas! And across the octagon, her opponent, Flanagan of the Red Corner. Her background, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. At 5 feet 4 inches tall, she also weighed in 115 pounds. As a professional, she is perfect. Seven victories, no defeats. Finding out of Long Beach, California, here is the undefeated Mackenzie Dunn! And to the green charge of the action is Michael Cardoso. So Michael Cardoso yeah. will call the action here. Chrissy Blair is with us here in Tampa, Florida. Mackenzie Dern. Fighter ready. Fighter ready. The new mom. Fight. Against Amanda Hibas. Hibas, 7 of 8 in the win column in her pro career. Mackenzie Dern, the perfect 7 and 0 as mentioned. And we are underway for three possible rounds here at Strawweight. So Hibas thought it would be on the feet, largely a striking battle. Mackenzie Dern disagreed she said we'll probably go to the ground we're both black belts in jiu-jitsu they probably will at some point but as we know every fight starts on the feet so you got to be prepared doesn't matter how good you are at jiu-jitsu those first you know the minute whatever it is is on the feet oh wow he must backs up Dern but I tell you Mackenzie has some big big power in her shots well just ask Amanda Cooper who that's what I'm referring was to her last opponent that it went down as a submission victory but Dern dropped her with a big hand yeah big right in the first round she went down because Mackenzie put her down simple as that and as I always say the best takedown in the game is a left hook there you go all you wrestlers listening <laughs> Dern connects with the chin with that left hand a moment ago did mention in that fight against Amanda Cooper though at UFC 224 down in Brazil, Dern missed weight by seven pounds. She weighed in at 123 pounds. She's missed weight in three of her first seven fights, uh, leading some to be concerned that she could make the weight at strawweight, especially so soon after giving birth. She was walking around talking to us on Thursday at 117 pounds. Yeah, that's so right. Kind of a, a lifestyle change has led to quite the transformation for Dern who made it with no problem that was definitely the narrative coming into this fight I mean as you said seven pounds I mean that's a it's not even close to be honest you know so obviously having a baby four months ago you know you would be concerned simple as that this kind of right from Hibas yeah Hibas is looking a little sharper on the feet Mackenzie's on that outside pressuring throwing good shots throwing big hooks but Hibas is looking for the counters with the fast shots straight shots you know, the fastest point to where you're going is as the crow flies, A to B, coming in an arc in a, in a hooking motion is the, is the slowest way to it. That was a slip. A little stumble in the flurry there by Dern. And we fought for over two minutes here. Neither has thought about a takedown yet. And the crazy thing is that both of them have fathers in their corner. I can only imagine the emotions of the fathers right now. I mean, that's, it's insane to me. Oh. And the exchanges on each side. He was connected there. There it is. There's the first shot. There's the takedown as well. But he was gets yeah, straight he back. He scrambles down. right back to yeah. his feet. That was quick. Spinning body kick lands for Hebas. And now dips and starts that combination of the body. Still living down in Minas Gerais, Brazil, is Amanda Hibas, but when she books a fight, she comes up to American Top Team here in Florida to do her fight camp. Pahumpa in her corner here tonight as she dodges the big right hand of Dern. Yeah, and Mackenzie's looking for those big, big power shots, you know. And if they connect like they did against Amanda Cooper, it's a fantastic thing, but you've got to set them up. You can't just swing a massive arcing shot like that. Throw a jab first. You've got to mask it a little bit. You know, don't let them know it's coming. Don't send them an email first. 
This. I want to see how this goes down. On paper, Mackenzie is more decorated, but you know that doesn't necessarily mean anything. I mean that there's a submission there for Hibas. Dern trying to use the flexibility and swing that left leg over, and instead settles back to the closed guard. Final minute in the first round. The big moment there for Hibas after the firefight, and then Dern sunk for the takedown, and Hibas turned things around quickly. Yeah, so Hiba's doing a really good job now of just nullifying her. See the way she's got both arms underneath the armpits there and maintaining chest-on-chest chest pressure. So she's giving Mackenzie just no room to try and move anything, you know, to, to get anything going, to set something up. She's got to get a forearm in the face, push that head up to create some space, get the chest off Mackenzie's chest. Therefore, she has an opening to start looking for a submission setup. And keeping Dern close. Now Hiba's tried to put some distance there. And maybe some ground and pound, but they will end the first round on the ground. With the BMF title on the line for UFC 244, take a look at some of the other athletes deserving of the baddest title through BMF resumes. Each week we'll pick one of UFC's toughest athletes and take a look back into some of their most exciting fights. Check out Tony Ferguson and Robbie Lawler's BMF resumes. Those are streaming now only on UFC Fight Pass. Underway for the second round here between these two bright straw weights. Trevor Whitman is with us here for the expertise. What did you notice through the first five minutes, Trevor? You know, uh, Rebus is sharp. And uh, sometimes when you go down a weight class, it doesn't benefit you. I feel like uh, Mackenzie is better at 125 because this, she doesn't have the speed. And uh, if she goes at 125, she lands big shots because she's able to. But Rebus is like she's seeing everything. Yeah, that's right. I mean, she certainly believes in her power. Man, oh, look at this counter exchange. from Hibas there. Yeah, almost, Dern, like, almost like she believes in it too much. Yeah, she believes in her power, but she's leaving herself open and with the speed advantage yep. and with respect to slightly sharper, more accurate striking, she's getting countered. And as you go down in weight, they get sharper. Correct. But Dern's taking it well, though. She's not breathing heavy. Oh, that was a big right shot. Hibas. Again, she's got a hell of a chin, Mackenzie, though. She's taking some big shots, and wow. she doesn't really show the effects. Dern out of the range. She tried a couple of takedowns. In that first round, zero of two is how it was tallied. Meanwhile, one of one on the takedown for Hibas, and this is what the significant strikes look like. The number's three to one in favor of Hibas. Oh, right there, time for Dern. Yeah, that was a good connection. You heard the slap all over the arena. But again, Amanda Hibas took it so well. We saw those numbers, the outputs there for Dern. I'll tell you what, this is a fantastic though, fight. Not. Both yeah, ladies. Sinks level, sorry. No, no, pardon me, Brendan. I'm sorry, buddy. You were talking. I'm just saying, both ladies absolutely bringing it here. Sensational fight. More body head for Hibas that time. As we approach the halfway point, three possible rounds. <laughs> Dern, who grew up in Arizona, but her father's Brazilian. They speak Portuguese to her in her corner. Now residing in Los Angeles. Heavy exchange on each side. Turn dips and put some power into that right hand. Yeah, she throws with everything she has in every single shot. Clearly looking for the knockout to drop her, you know. And if they get through, I mean, she has a couple of times she's landed flush. And Hebas has tugged them, but 
He's still looking for it. Well, if you're so good in jiu-jitsu, and we've seen this from other black belts in the UFC, or guys that are just really slick on the ground, is that they can throw kind of with reckless abandon because they're not afraid to get taken down or go down. No, for sure, yeah. The wrestlers certainly have that advantage because, you know, generally their hips are so strong. If somebody shoots on them, you know, they, they, they don't get it. So they can just, as you said, throw with reckless abandon. I've seen that from Brian Ortega sometimes. He finds himself on the bottom and ends the fight quicker yeah. than if he stayed on the feet and struck. Kibas, nice jab there that time as we approach the final minute of the second round. Really high pace fight so far. Though. There's a nice takedown entry. She gets in on the leg. But Kibas does a good job and once again gets the, gets the hit throw, but straight into full guard. Dern was almost able to end up on the back there, but Hebus yeah. spins into it. And now again, in the final minute of a round, he just finds herself on top. Just going to say, in the final minute, I kind of want to see these ladies on the ground, see what they got, see what Mackenzie can offer, you know, but uh, every time it's right at the end of the round. Back to the center after Hebas able to break free from the guard of Dern. Sinks into the right hand while Hibas stays sharp on her feet. Charging forward is Hibas in the final seconds of the second round. And one more big exchange. Round three coming, 30-second break. <laughs> 